Golden Blue will be back with another video just for you, the college football fan. So if you are a college football fan, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Look, it's a long college football offseason, but I'm here to get you through it. Don't forget to go check out our Patreon page. A lot of time and effort going into that. And I call my Patreons the shot callers because, well, they do call the shots around here. Also, we have a great website designed and created by Joey Foster. We have eight great writers led by head writer Michael Walker. Day five of me being sick, so my voice is still very, very raspy. I'm going to try to give as much energy as I can. But hopefully you'll bear with me because this thing is not going away anytime soon, it seems like. And today I'm going to talk about why Texas ne needs to run away from the SEC ASAP. Not tomorrow, not next week, not the next month, not after their first year in the SEC right now. Y'all need to back out right now. And all the reasons why Texas is going to the SEC, they, they already have actually. Uh, it'll give us better advantages in, in recruiting. Uh, you already recruit at a super high level. Uh, it'll bring in more money for Texas. You're already one of the most wealthiest universities in the nation. All it's going to do is give you tougher competition. So as bad as it's been in the past 10 years, it's going to be way worse when you get into the SEC. And the funny thing is there's been some writers for University of Texas that compare Texas to the New York Yankees. I would say money-wise, yeah, comparable. Championships-wise, not comparable at all. Texas has four national championships. Now, that's good. That's more than my team, West Virginia. Kudos, Texas. 1963, 1969, 1970, and 2005. Four national championships. New York Yankees, 27 world championships. Stop comparing yourself to the New York Yankees. You are nowhere close to the New York Yankees. You will have to play college football another 200 years to approach how good the Yankees are right now or the success that they've had as of right now, the making of this video. 200 more years of college football you'd have to play to even approach that. Now we know Texas is not the only one going to the SEC. Oklahoma is going with Texas to the SEC. I'm not as worried about Oklahoma going to the SEC as I am for Texas. Now, if you look over the past 10 years, head-to-head -head recruiting, not counting this year, Texas has beaten Oklahoma in recruiting six times. If you count this year, seven times. So Oklahoma has only beaten Texas four times out of the last 10 years, and yet their record is much, much better than Texas. Since 2012, here's what Texas' record looks like. Nine and four, eight and five, Six and seven, five and seven, five and seven, six and seven, ten and four, a ten win season, eight and five, seven and three, and five and seven. That's three losing seasons in the past ten years. What about Oklahoma? What does their record look like the past ten years? Ten and three, eleven and two, eight and five, eleven and two, eleven and two, twelve and two, twelve and two, twelve and two, nine and two, eleven and two. Eight seasons of at least ten wins. No losing seasons. Yeah, Oklahoma has done much, much better than Texas. And Texas has out-recruited them for the most part. Let's look at what both teams did this past year. Texas, 5-7. and seven. Now, Texas actually got off to a hot start in 2021. Beat Louisiana, lost at Arkansas, but then beat Rice, beat Texas Tech, beat TCU on the road. And here's where the problem started. They lost to Oklahoma after Oklahoma came back in Dallas, the Red River rivalry. They lost to Oklahoma State, lost at Baylor, lost at Iowa State, lost to Kansas at home, then lost at West Virginia, and then somehow beat Kansas State at home in the last game of the season. Now for Oklahoma, they actually struggled in the beginning of the season, barely winning games. Beat Tulane by five, blew out Western Carolina, beat Nebraska by seven, beat West Virginia by three, beat Kansas State on the road by six, of course beat Texas in Dallas in the Red River rivalry by seven points. Then they kind of caught their groove, beat TCU by a significant margin, beat Kansas on the road 35-23, uh, that was a little bit of an iffy game. Blew out Texas Tech 52-21 in the last three games, toughies on the road to Baylor, lost 27-14, but they were competitive, beat Iowa State at home 28-21, lost on the road to Oklahoma State 37-33 but also competitive. So even in a down year with two losses, even in those two losses to the two best teams in the Big 12, Oklahoma was competitive. You look at Texas, they were a train wreck last year and they already have all the advantages. They already recruit the best out of the Big 12. They already have the most money out of the Big 12. Now they're transitioning over to the SEC. I mean, yeah, they'll probably make more money, but look what it's done for them so far. 
I mean, how much better will their recruiting actually be? Well, let's look at their recruiting classes. 2012, the number two recruiting class in the nation. 2013, number 17 recruiting class. 2014, number 17 recruiting class. 2015, the number 10 recruiting class. 2016, the number seven recruiting class. 2017, an off year, the number 25 recruiting class. 2018, the number three recruiting class. 2019, the number three recruiting class. 2020, the number eight recruiting class. 2021, the number 15 recruiting class. And 2022, the number five recruiting class. So their recruiting classes are actually pretty good already. How much better will their recruiting class be maybe be a regular in the top five well if you look at 2012 number two 2018 number three 2019 number three 2022 number five that's four years where they were already in the top five and they didn't do anything with that talent so i definitely see that the cons are going to outweigh the pros by a lot because you already have the pros right now you already recruit at a high level you already have the most money out of any team in the Big 12 and maybe out of any team in the entire nation. In fact, if you think about it, Texas is losing some competitive advantages. They won't have that cushy Big 12 scheduling. It's going to be a grind in the SEC and the calls on the field. They are not going to get that home cooking definitely on the road. And I think they lose that home cooking at home. They are not going to get the calls from the refs in the SEC. So now let's look at Texas 2022 schedule versus what their future schedule could look like. So here's what it looks like in 2022. They get UL Monroe at home. They get Alabama at home. I know a lot of high expectations for Texas fans. They think they're going to beat Alabama. I'm telling you, you're going to get beat, and it's not going to be close. Alabama's going to have one of their best teams they've had in a long time. Home foot advantage means nothing against Alabama when they're that good. Then they get UTSA at home. At Texas Tech, that's a tricky road game. They get West Virginia at home. Then they get Oklahoma in the Red River rivalry in Dallas. Iowa State at home. At Oklahoma State. Then they get their bye week. At Kansas State. TCU at home. At Kansas. And then Baylor at home. I do think Texas gets to a bowl this year. But I think Texas is looking at 7-5, maybe 8-4 and four if everything falls together. So now let's look into the future. Let's look at what type of schedule Texas could have in the SEC. So for their out-of-conference first three games, I have a home game for South Alabama, then a home game for FCS Northern Iowa, then a home game against Nevada. Then we get into SEC play. Cross division with Kentucky at home. Then they go on the road to LSU. Then they get Oklahoma in Dallas for the Red River rivalry. Then they get their bye week. Then they get a home game against Alabama which we'll get a preview of that this year when they play Alabama at home and on the road to Arkansas on the road to Ole Miss back to another cross division with Tennessee at home then one more out of conference with Appalachian State at home and on the road to Texas A&M so basically your schedule gets much tougher and the advantages that you think you're getting in the SEC you already have now so you're not really gaining anything from the SEC except for much stiffer competition uh, you're going to need all the luck in the world, Texas. You're not going to be very good in the SEC. It's going to be an actual nightmare for Texas. If there's any loophole, if there's any clause for you to back out of the SEC deal right now, you need to take it and you need to run right now because the future for Texas is not going to be good in the SEC. They are going to steamroll you in the SEC. I don't think Oklahoma is going to have that problem. They might have their down years because it's going to be a year after year type of thing in the SEC, a grind. So they might have their down years, but I don't think they're going to get steamrolled like I think Texas is going to get steamrolled. And I think one of the reasons why they hired Steve Sarkeesian is because he has experience in the SEC. What we saw last year, that doesn't mean anything. In the Big 12, he went 5-7 and seven in his first year with all that talent. I'm sorry, that's not going to help Texas run away from the SEC if it's still possible. Maybe you're already locked in, and if that's the case, good luck. It's going to be a long, long several seasons in the SEC. So you might want to buckle up because it's going to be a bumpy ride for Texas when they get to the SEC. Y'all let me know in the comments section if you think Texas will be able to compete in the SEC. Personally, I don't think so because they already have the advantages that they're claiming that they're going to gain in the SEC now. And we see what they've done with it in the Big 12. But maybe I'm completely off. I look forward to your comments on this one. That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.